Hey, Aaron here. Have you ever wanted to give your terrains and other 3D models a wireframe look? It's really easy. Let me show you how. Let's start with the most basic, right? Here I've got a plane and a cube. I'm going to turn on the Redshift renderer here. So go from standard to Redshift. And then I'm going to add a new material. And I'm going to double click to open up the material. And over here I'll click on the plus button and I'll choose wireframe. Right? Just write that in. Grab it, drop it. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is just connect this to the color. And right away, if I just drag this onto our cube, we'll see some thin lines added to our cube. And we're also going to drag the material onto our plane. Now, you'll notice that if I'm looking here in my lines, I'm only seeing squares. I'm not seeing triangles. But here, I'm seeing triangles. Well, that's easy enough to fix. What you do is you go into the wireframe settings. So we'll go into here. We'll go over to the base and the color wireframe. You'll see that we've got show hidden edges. Turn that off. Now we've got something that shows the wireframes. We can also make the wire thickness something like two, and we get, you know, a nice looking wireframe. We can also increase the number of polygons in our object. So if my plane needs more lines, I'll just set that to 20 by 20. And we get that. We can do it with the cube as well. We can go with five by five by five. Great, so that's how you add a wireframe. But the cool thing is, you don't just have to add it to the color of the object, you can add it to other aspects of the material. One example is that I could use a wireframe for opacity. So in this little project here, I've got a sphere and a plane, and inside of the sphere is an area light. So let me turn off the sphere, and what you'll see is that the light is here, but it's being blocked by the sphere. So as soon as I turn it on, that light disappears. So let me jump into this material here, just bring it open. And I'll add a wireframe again. Drop that here. And I'll apply it to the opacity. Then in the settings here, I'm going to turn off show hidden edges. And I want to invert the color so that black is white and white is black. So let me set the white to black. And set the black to white. And now I'm going to apply this to our sphere. I'm also going to jump back to the material and to the wireframe, and I'm going to set that up to something like 10 to see what happens. And if we pull in here, we can see that the wireframe is casting the shadow. Now another example is using the wireframe for emission, like I did in my first example. So I've got a landscape, actually got three of them and a plane, and I've got a purple material applied to them. I'm going to double click to open up the material. I'm going to add in a wireframe again, drop it in. Okay, and this time I'm going to drag it over the emission property and the color specifically. And we're not going to really see anything just yet because the material's emission weight is still zero. So we have to go over to the material and if we go down to where it has emission and we set the weight of the emission to something other than zero, why don't we go with like six, it's going to light up like a torch here. But that's because the colors aren't right. So let's set the wire color to a bright pink like this, or purple, something like that. And then let's set the polygon color to purple also, but much darker. It's almost black. Okay. And of course, we have to also turn off our show hidden edges. And now we've got a nice little uh, synth wave kind of background. Let me also just add in a little bit of bloom. So I've got a Redshift camera that's here, and we're looking through that. I'm going to go into the lens effects. I'm going to turn on bloom. So I'll override the existing settings. I'm going to set that threshold down to like 2. And um, I'll also increase the intensity. Why not to 200? Let's see what happens when we do it that way. And maybe the softness as well. And we're getting something nice. Now, in my example, I had a car, and maybe you want to do that too. It's easy. You can download something from Sketchfab, for example, or in my case, I could use the Cinema 4D browser. You can access the browser right here, and it's got all these different models. I've got the car here right now. I did a search for car, as you can see, and it came up. So I'm just going to drop this car right in over here, and then just I'm just going to scale it down to fit the scene exactly the way I want it. And I can use the Place tool right here. And again, I can scale this down. You can rotate it, maybe make it a little bit bigger, you know, get it to where you want it to be. I think I'll also go in there and uh, thicken up the lines a little bit more. So going down here, maybe set these to two. That's give us probably a nicer glow too. Probably can pull that back. So go back into the camera settings and lower the intensity a little bit. Maybe leave it at 100 and we can soften things up a little. Yeah, and now you've got yourself a cool 80s synthwave setup right here. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching. I hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz. I'll see you soon.